delving in a little bit more, you know, there's a lot of references that the ancient Greeks also uh, and Egyptians worked with flower essences. Hildegard von Bingen is the first recorded European person, first recorded person to work with flower essences. And I've been to her monastery just about an hour west of Frankfurt. It's a really lovely location, the original monastery. So she used to get the nuns to lay muslin sheets out overnight on the flowers. They'd collect the flowers, which had absorbed the dew in the morning, wring it out and give it to treat the emotional imbalances. And at the third International Flower Essence Conference I mentioned, we had two Aboriginal elders open it up. And one of them, um, you know, and this was back in the early 1920s, he was treated with flower essences for polio and it cured him of that. So the indigenous people, you know, all around the world, and including the Australian Aborigines have worked with flower essences for a long time. The first settlers coming to Australia record that if the Aborigines were sick, they would float a flower called Waratah, which we'll look at shortly, in water, and then they would drink that water. And, uh, and sometimes they would uh, eat the flowers, getting emotional healing qualities. And if they couldn't eat the flower, then they would sit next to that plant to absorb the vibrational energy of it. So it's a very long tradition, especially in Australia. And one of the areas I wanted to touch on is family influence and also belief systems, the impact that that has on anyone. And the flower that I found very beneficial for that is this one called Five Corners. Here's a map of Australia and it grows on the East Coast. So, you know, I, I live just outside of Sydney, which is on the East Coast of Australia, the most popular sign. And it's got a beautiful pink flower, which is that love vibration. And if we look at a map of the psyche, we have a conscious, subconscious and the higher self. And many people listening would be aware that by age three, 90% of our beliefs about the world are already formed. So from that moment of conception, the time in the womb and those early years, we're building our belief systems, which, you know, 30 years, 50 years later, our conscious mind doesn't remember but the subconscious beliefs are still having a huge impact. And I don't know about you, but I would rather myself at current age, just determining the beliefs rather than little Ian when he was a two year old without a very, a lot of worldly experience of life to determine things. So for example, I'm sure the person who's the richest person in a country a child is born into that family is going to have a very different belief system around money and abundance than a child who's born into the poorest family. Or if the parents were always arguing around money, it was never enough and was a great source of faith. It's going to have an impact on the belief around money. Was a child conceived by parents with a lot of affection and love for each other who were consciously hoping for a conception? A child born that way is probably going to have very different belief systems around sexuality relationships than the child conceived through a very violent rape. So those beliefs, and you know, we tend to mimic our parents. We're thinking they're godlike figures, you know, which is fine when we're one and two. But you know, by the time we become an adult, we realize, oh, dad was a bit neurotic. You know, I hope I don't pick up his traits. And by then, it's it's usually far too late. And if I'm treating people, you know, let's say come in for a shoulder problem, or it might be that they're, you know, trying to build up their flower essence practice, I will check through kinesiology, do they have subconscious sabotage to their particular goal? So you can get to stay the state, get them to state such as, I want to be free of all pain and discomfort in my shoulder. And then you get them to say the reverse. And, and if there's a sabotage, you, you can pick this up, All right? I want to have a, a busy, successful, financially vibrant flower essence practice. You know, you test their arm and it unlocks indicating 
in the subconscious, it's not in alignment with that conscious goal that they have. And the flower, the five corners, it works for clearing the sabotage. And the reason it does it, it's working on self-love, self-esteem. And, you know, have you ever suffered from a bit of lack of confidence or low self-esteem? And it's probably only the compulsive liars who would say, never. And, you know, we can part of the human condition needing a little bit more self-love. And for a lot of people, they have a goal, but on a subconscious level, there's also a sense of, I don't deserve it. I'm not good enough to have it. So once we clear that, we clear those sabotages. And I said, they can be running a person's life for 70, 80 years. And you know, we'll find some of the essences can work on a conscious level. Some are accessing the higher self, but a lot will clear things here in the subconscious. And that's a close up. We can see that lovely pink, which in color therapy is the love vibration. And we have a number of combinations in dosage strands ready to go, which are included with this essence. And the dose for the bush essences is a little bit different to other systems. We normally recommend taking seven drops of the dose bottle on rising, seven drops on retiring. We found you don't need to be taking it three or four times a day. And also it's easy to forget. So it's quite simple, have it by the bed, take it on rising, taking it um, last thing at night, very powerful times in the psyche. If you were working with, maybe you're working with some Alaskan or some um, healing herbs, you know, whatever they recommend to make up their dose bottle, they might be saying put four drops in, and, but you would put seven drops from a stock into a dose bottle for the bush essences. And if the Alaskan and the healing herbs needed to be taken four times a day, then you can take that dose four times a day. But if you're just working directly with a bush essence, it's seven drops on rising and retiring. And for two weeks, if it's an emotional one, then reassess and if there's a physical issue, and the origin is almost invariably from emotional cause, then you might want to work for a month and then reassess, although quite often you don't need it for that long. <clears throat> 